Hey, welcome back to Deadly Northern Lights. And we're looking at a, a reboot of Turn 1's Southern Map activities. <clears throat> and as I mentioned, I think in the last video or some posts online on Facebook or on the blog or somewhere, uh, I, I was uh, discussing that there are a number of different things that can be done in a given turn and the sequence that you do those things can often have a material impact on the gameplay and the game itself and, and all that sort of sort of stuff. So if you'll bear with me, what I'll, I'll do is try and walk you through some of the thinking uh, that, that, that's going on here. And my first takeaway is to, to, en to ensure you, I guess, that <clears throat> this is not a extremely complicated game it's just an involved game and it's involved from the perspective of uh, a choice making and, and and kind of having to, to come to grips with what the various systems that you uh, are in control of can do and that to me that's very interesting it's also uh, can be frustrating if you have not played it a lot which I haven't yet and adding the layer of naval activity in here to the land warfare and the air warfare, uh, it adds, a, adds some wrinkles. And so it's, it's, it's really interesting. As I go through things, I keep finding my, pulling myself up and going, oh, hang on a second. I could maybe do this, this, or this. What if I did that? And uh, that's, uh, that's an intriguing exercise. It, it may make for somewhat slower gameplay, particularly if you're playing solo, right? Because you're trying to guess yourself all the time. So uh, anyway, that's kind of like a, a caveat there, I guess. Oh, I went the wrong way. I'm trying to uh, zoom out a little bit. All right. So here's the situation. The Soviets in turn one after turn zero have their uh, ships and landing craft loaded and they have two task forces. And the first task force was to land here, ideally. This is task force two right there, right here. And we'll zoom back in in just a minute. <clears throat> but in order to do that, they had to first uh, acquire air superiority in this region here. Let me just angle the camera up a little bit. This area here. And what they, because they didn't have enough air superiority chits left because they used most of them up north in Norway, they couldn't put an air superiority marker down here. Now, in hindsight, it would have been smart to put one here and maybe one here and split the four available air superiority chits uh, like that. Now, they can still, uh, the, the, you know, the NATO forces, they put an air superiority chit down and they, uh, they, the Soviets could contest this area. So there was some air combat that went on here and I've already posted about all that. But at the end of the day, the air superiority went to NATO in this particular mega hex area. And that allowed us to uh, keep our naval surveillance and our ASW surveillance active. Whereas here, uh, whereas here, the Soviets had put down surveillance, naval surveillance here, and that had to be removed because they lost, uh, they did not have air superiority. Now, if there was no air superiority chip, they could have left it. Both sides could actually have it in the same mega hex. So, so what the NATO side did was go for this mega hex and this mega hex and, and get air superiority in both. And that meant that they would have aircraft kind of on station, for want of a better term, that would allow them to conduct either intercepts of foreign aircraft or intercepts or naval strikes against uh, Navy units. Uh, you know, intercept air that came through, all, all sorts of things like that, right? So that's before we've moved anything. So we've gone and we've done all that, those sorts of exercises. <clears throat> and what the, what the Soviets want to do, what the Warsaw Pact wants to do is be able to have a clear shot at, at sailing through here and not being shot at by submarines or bombed by aircraft. So in order to do that, the first thing they decided to do was send these guys who were on patrol 
to, or, or who, who move these guys to here, then put them on patrol and seek to intercept or find these four squadrons or, 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 or four units of, for want of a better term, uh, submarines, uh, East, uh, West German submarines. And so they went through that exercise and they failed visibly. They didn't find anybody. <laughs> so that uh, didn't go very well. <clears throat> but when Task Force 2 entered this area, it was immediately in, uh, attacked by the uh, ASW capabilities and by all these submarines. They all got to take a shot at Task Force 2. So they did that. Paid the price, they had to uh, be uh, shot back at with the anti-sub warfare capabilities. But at the end of the day, that uh, took two steps away from them, but it also uh, shrunk the, sunk and shrunk the transport capability of Task Force 2. And we lost a, a step on a battalion, and then another step because we didn't have enough shipping to handle all of the units that were left. And so there was uh, almost a full battalion, full battalion's worth of losses, which we'll, we'll get into in a little bit. Uh, so, so that happened. So that was the first thing. So you know, the task force got to here, you know, they got attacked by these guys. And I'm thinking, oh, as the Soviets, oh, well, okay, clear sailing. We can go move to, let me look this up, we can move to here and, and Bob's your uncle. Well, um, <clears throat> That not to be was not to be the case. The uh, let's see, the I'm just thinking here out loud. What happened? Oh, we're going to skip around what happened in actual chronological order of me doing them and just uh, talk about what what happened next. I elected then with the units in this area to uh, execute a. Uh, so the air units that were in air superiority were going to escort units flying from flying from Denmark and from uh, either West Germany or from here. I forget where they came from specifically, but they were going to uh, come in and do a standoff strike with a missile strike, basically against the naval units, uh, the Task Force Two. And then uh, all the other units that uh, came along would uh, execute a would execute a uh, a strike, uh, just a regular strike, a naval strike as well. So that all hap that all happened. That caused a little bit more damage to Task Force Two. We lost some aircraft because because these guys had air superiority. The Soviets had air superiority here. That allowed them to try and intercept in this in this in this area. It allowed them to try and intercept. All right, I had a little bit of a interruption there, so I apologize for that. <clears throat> Likely discontinuity that's going to occur. I believe I was talking uh, about Soviet air superiority here. Uh, intercepting the the forces that flew into to try and uh, attack Task Force Two there, so didn't go well for the Soviets, unfortunately, and it it actually really should have gone a lot better than it did. Uh, double check the results and double check the modifiers and all that sort of stuff. Just uh, dis disappointing rolling. We did inflict a couple of damages, but uh, and one abort, but uh, the majority of the units got through, and that's when uh, things got funky for the for the allied forces because task force two when you when you do a standoff attack you know you get attacked by flak uh, at a, a far more limited on a far more limited basis and that was uh that was uh okay and actually the probably the most effective attack that we did but then when you send in uh, other units on basically a bombing run right it's brutal. You've got to you've got to basically fly through the outer, inner, and core uh, flak zones and and face the AA. So it's it's horrible, uh, not good. And uh, we we lost a. In fact, what I ended up doing was aborting uh, the last three aircraft from their strike uh, because I I started looking at it and 
you know, there was no way that we were going to walk out of that without, uh, uh, if not step losses, then definitely multiple damage hits because you're literally fired at by every ship, which will be all of those red units. And even though many of them are rated at D, which is highly ineffectual, there's still the odd chance that you roll in a 20. And I just want to say the dice that come in the box, this sucker has rolled 20s like a boss. So uh, <laughs> I don't know where they came from, but uh, they're, uh, <laughs> they, they seem very, very, uh, very odd to me. Anyway, so <clears throat> we went through this uh, naval strike mission with the air and we'd uh, already done the sub stuff and so I was like okay now can I think now can I continue moving the task force and bring it in to come into here and then move into this mega hex and uh, we can we can do some stuff well uh, I moved to here and the uh, Danes go oh well I mean I have guys that are on patrol here bro uh, I've got two, four, I've got six ships. So we're going to intercept you. And at this point, I'm thinking, okay, no, really? Fine. Let's uh, let's go around. Let's see how missile combat and all that stuff works. Let's, let's, let's do that. So we did. And that was a huge mistake for the Soviets. And in fact, I, I elected to give the Soviets a, a, a bygones and say, hey, look, you can, you can back out of that action if you want. Uh, but they had to survive the intercept roll first, and they didn't. So we were ending up doing this combat anyway. So that meant that we moved over here, and we went through outer inner core screened. Uh, well, I don't know where the... Yeah, these are the guys that were screened. <clears throat> we went through this combat exercise. The first thing you do is do missile combat, and you take the missile combat value, which is, I think it's this number. Is that that right? No, I think it's the other one. I, can, oh, I always forget these. Let me just check now so I'm not pointing to the wrong thing. <coughs> no, that's the gun number. The first number is the gun number. The second number on the bottom is the missile combat, and then the last one is the anti-sub warfare. So three, zero, anti-sub, four, here we got three eight for missile. These guys are awesome. They're like, I guess, some sort of missile gunboat type of action. Love those bad boys. So you tally up all those points, those missile points, and you go, woohoo, I'm going to uh, allocate uh, X to this uh, outer inner core. And uh, we're just going to, we're going to go for it. And then these guys do the same. And they, these guys only have one. Uh, I put everything in the outer core or, or the core as the case might be. Uh, uh, the outer, inner, or core sectors. I put them all in the core sector because they don't really have enough to spread around. And uh, so we did that. Everyone fired missiles. This dude died. This dude died. This dude died. Step losses. And then you go to gun combat and you can have multiple rounds of gun combat. Three rounds. Now, at the end of all that, it just... I think it just kind of ends. There's no retreating in the Navy. Uh, so uh, we all we, we went through one round of gun, gun combat to see how that worked. And that was... Uh, that was every guy gets to shoot once in a round. And you do it by highest gun factor first. So we did that. And as you can see, there were... Uh, these guys ended up... When you do gun combat, you can work. You can say that certain units are screened, and so they don't participate, and they don't take any damage. So we screened off, obviously, all the landing craft. You know, let these guys take the damage, but we picked up, you know, one, two, uh, three more step losses uh, of ships, and these guys took uh, another step loss. And after that, I was like, ah, okay, good, I'm good. I don't want to roll the dice another twenty times. So I got the experience out of the way. Got to see how that all works. I would very happily engage with the Danish Navy against any Navy using missile combat for sure because it's uh, pretty deadly and you can hit the hit the bad guys where you want to. Now you can't just, uh, when you do the missile combat by the way, you, you've got to roll a die on a table to see how many units you actually get to strike at 
in a, a given uh, you know, in a given sector, and then the, those hits are randomly allocated. So you've got to you know pick a number between one and four, and uh, if it's one ship, then all the hits are going to go on one ship, or there'll be a set, might be two ships, and you get a roll again for that ship and see how many hits it gets. So it's pretty interesting stuff, and it you know it takes a while, right? So. <coughs> We, we are now ready to land this task force. I'm going to land him right here. Uh, we were going to go for it and land here and take out this Hawk uh, unit, and uh, which, you know, which the beginning of the turn I, I sent in, uh, that's another thing I did uh, earlier on in the turn, is I sent in a, uh, the Tupolovs to try and take out this Hawk uh, site and, and and crap it out. Now I, I went for a ground strike mission. I could have just as easily done a seed mission that would have suppressed enemy uh, air defenses, right? Uh, I could have done that as well, but we went for the uh, destruction option and we failed. Uh, and in fact, we lost a lot of aircraft doing that. Uh, a because the Hawks hit them, and B because the the uh, interceptors in this other mega hex here uh, messed messed them up pretty bad, and I've already written about all that, so no need for me to talk much more about it. Uh, so, so these guys can land here. What's left of them uh, can land here. And my reading of the uh, combat uh, naval transport amphibious landing stuff is uh, for every two steps of landing transport cap uh, capacity that's lost, I lose one step of uh, ground units. And so a step loss is putting a marker like this, where are we, like this underneath one. And if it's a Soviet, so, so there's that, right? But then you've got to look at it and go, well, do I have enough steps to carry everybody that's left? And I'm thinking that, you know, this, the carrying rules, and this is where I need a little clarification uh, from the designer, but the carrying capacity of one of these units, one of these guys here, say, is one battalion. So it can carry a battalion. Well, this is now not a full battalion. I don't know if it's te technically a half a battalion, because remember in this game, the, the Soviets get these funky, it's it's out of three now, right? Uh, so it goes one, three uh, with with battalions. And I, I've got to reread the rules on, on how those losses are going to get allocated and how they're shipped properly. And then I'm going to, then I'm going to land them. So my point about all this is that was all really cool. What that has done now has meant that we have a situation where <clears throat> once I land these guys, I have another task force with more Marines that I can land and they will come through. And the only thing that's going to be different is that, uh, well, you know what? They're not going to, I don't believe they're going to face uh, the subs. Sub interception. There's uh, limited air left for the Germans or the, or the Americans or the UK to really throw at the at the problem, so they may get to just sail right through. Um, and I don't also that's one thing I need to check as well. I don't know if I'm on patrol that if I can intercept twice. I don't believe you can, but but so that so it's kind of like uh, <laughs> sending you know. Uh, it would probably depend on how much hidden information that you really have, uh, because you once you once you've got level three, you're going to know how many LSTs, how many landing craft there are, and, and the composition of those landing craft, and therefore how many units are on them. So you could, if there weren't enough goodies to shoot at, you could ease off on the intercepting and the naval strike missions. And then, and then say, okay, well, I'm going to wait for the, ne the next task force to come, and that's when I'm going to strike. 
so that's that's another option as well. So there's lots of nuance going on here. There's lots of decisions to be made, which is good. It does generate lots of narrative. So I'm having a, uh, quite a bit of fun. So anyway, I'm going to wrap it up here because otherwise I'm going to have to start joining videos together. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more. Hopefully uh, we'll, uh, we'll keep up uh, the gameplay for the next uh, couple of turns and see what happens. Talk to you soon.